Hi, this is TapCat, and today we're going to talk about the new XCOM 2 War of the Chosen video that focuses on the Templar Hero class. There was also a live stream featuring the Templar, but after the game crashed twice, the stream was aborted and all of the video deleted. Thankfully, I was able to find some written accounts of what was learned from the stream before it ended, as well as comments from one of the development team that helped clarify a number of things. So while we may not have a lot of video footage of the Templar, this might just be the most complete information we've gotten on any of the hero classes so far. The Templar Rebel Faction is led by Geist, one of the original psionic soldiers from the XCOM Enemy Unknown era. He and his followers kept themselves isolated from the cities where Advent holds sway and relentlessly pursued the collection of psionic energy as well as the development of weapons in the form of gauntlets to channel it and enhance their latent psionic skills. The Templar's basic attack is Rend. It works similarly to a ranger's slash attack, but uses Psy Blades, literally swords made from psionic energy, and it has a number of new features. First, the basics. Rend has a 100% chance to hit and a 10% chance to crit. It does four to five damage with the tier one shard gauntlets and will scale up as you upgrade. The gauntlets, by the way, are more or less the equivalent of the Psy Amp and like most gear in XCOM 2, can be upgraded twice by the end game. Unlike most attacks that use psionic energy, Ren does not bypass armor, but it does have a chance to stun or disorient the target. I mentioned that it works along the lines of Slash, and that includes being able to attack at the tail end of a move, including a full dash. If you score a kill off of Rend, you'll generate one focus for your Templar. Focus is a critical resource for Templars, and we'll talk more about that in a minute. Attacking with Rend, whether you get a kill or not, will also generate something else that's new to the game, and that's Momentum. Momentum allows the Templar to take an extra move after the attack, or you can choose to parry instead of moving. Parrying will make the first attack against the Templar on the alien turn miss. So basically, you get a choice between using Implacable or Untouchable every single time you attack with Rend, whether you get a kill or not. And you don't even need to spend points on an ability to get that, it's just a basic part of being a Templar. Apparently during the live stream, it was also mentioned that it will be possible to take an ability that upgrades parry, so that it not just blocks, but reflects damage back against the attacker. What we don't know is whether the enemy will take the full damage that you would have, or just a percentage of that, so stay tuned for more information on that. Going back to Rend for a second, there's also an ability that upgrades it so that it gains a small cone-shaped area of effect damage. The amount of damage starts off very weak, but it increases as you gain focus. And now that we've mentioned focus a couple of times, let's go ahead and dive a little deeper into that topic. Focus is a new resource that Templars will need to spend to activate their various psionic abilities other than Rend. You'll start each mission with no focus and can have a maximum of two at any given time, although there is an ability we'll be able to take that increases that max to three. Getting a kill with Rend is the primary way to generate focus, but not the only way. Some of the details are murky, but it seems you'll be able to take an ability that will cause there to be a chance that when any of your squad mates gets a kill, there could be a loot drop with that item instantly restoring one focus for your Templar when he picks it up. So that's how you get focus. But what is it good for? Well, first, simply having focus will boost mobility and the damage that Rend inflicts on enemies. Use one of your psionic attacks and it will undoubtedly come in handy, but you'll lose those boosts, so there's a bit of a trade-off. And does that mean you shouldn't use focus? Well, let's talk about the abilities that consume it and you can judge for yourself. First up is Volt. Volt is the starter ability for Templars. It's a ranged attack costing one focus that throws a lightning bolt at nearby enemies. The damage is four to seven with the tier one Tempest Gauntlets and can hit a number of targets equal to the amount of focus you have when you activate it. So if you have one focus, you'll hit one guy. If you have three, you'll hit three. And unlike Rend, Volt does ignore armor so you can count on all of the damage going through. The other psionic attack that we know about so far is Ionic Storm. So this is a kernel level ability that brings a lightning storm down to fry any enemies within a radius of the Templar, 
for an unknown amount of damage. It does cost all of your focus to activate, but will give you back one for each enemy that it kills. So with a little help from the rest of your squad, this could cost you zero net focus and do some serious damage to the bad guys. And like Volt, Ionic Storm also ignores armor. And there's one more attack shown in the inside look that we don't know the name of or juicy details, but let's cover what we do know. It's a ranged attack that both damaged and disoriented a sectoid. We don't know whether it's guaranteed to disorient or if there's only a chance of that. And we also don't know how much damage it does. My hope is that the disorientation is guaranteed, and if that's the case, it will probably do less damage than Volt, but could be a nice utility power when you know you can't kill all of your enemies before the alien turn. I mentioned earlier that a Templar's mobility can be increased by building up your focus. Beyond that though, they have not one, but two teleportation abilities. The first is Invert, and will allow you to swap places with an enemy. The second is Exchange, where you'll switch places with the ally of your choice. Neither of these will end your turn, and it seems as though it will give the Templar some interesting options during combat, especially since abilities like Rend and Ionic Storm depend heavily on being in amongst the enemy. And it goes without saying that pulling an enemy out of cover could be extremely useful. But if Invert places you a little too far behind enemy lines, Pillar will allow you to raise an obelisk of psionic energy to act as cover for you. Now, I believe this is going to act as full cover, but I don't have what I consider to be full confirmation on that, so take it with a grain of salt. Finally, we have Ghost. Now, we already knew that the Templar can summon a duplicate of himself, and now we know how it works. It can be used just once per mission, and you'll target the corpse of a fallen enemy to create a ghostly doppelganger of yourself. It will have a specific amount of focus when it's created, and will have to spend that to take actions. It will have every ability that your Templar does, with the exception of the ability to create another ghost. And unlike the original, every ability it uses will cost focus, even Rend, and it has no way to recharge focus. Once it's used up, or if it takes enough damage to drop its health to zero, the ghost will despawn and go away. Now one thing this suggests is that you could attack until your focus drops to one and then use the ghost as a kind of poor man's mimic beacon to help keep your squad safe. In addition to their psionic abilities, the Templars also carry a pistol that's functionally identical to the one sharpshooters have and also share the same restrictions like the inability to use weapon upgrades. If you're fighting against the Lost, pistol shots will be the only Templar attack that triggers the headshot mechanism. Just be aware that killing with the pistol will not generate focus. This isn't Rend. Now, that said, there are going to be times when we may want to avoid moving forward into melee range for fear of triggering another pod of aliens, and if we don't have any focus available for a ranged psionic attack, it's good that we'll still have a way to deal some damage even if it isn't a lot. And now we're going to close with some information that applies to all of the faction hero classes. First, a lot of us have wondered if you'd be able to bring multiple heroes on the same mission because the lore we've seen has emphasized how the different resistance factions don't get along. Well, it turns out that not only can you bring them on the same mission, it would even be possible to bond two heroes from different factions. One drawback all heroes will have is that their armor will only allow for one utility slot, even at tier two and three. In the case of skirmishers and reapers, they'll have the chance to buy an ability that would add a second slot, but the Templars won't have that option and will only have a single slot for the entire campaign. Now finally, I had speculated in a prior video that the list of abilities in the XCOM row of the promotion screen might be drawing from a more limited focused pool than the vanilla classes get. And this is now confirmed. The heroes will get options that are more targeted for their class. For example, Templars will have access to Gunslinger and Blade-oriented Ranger abilities like Lightning Hands and Blade Storm. Each hero will be randomly assigned a minimum of three abilities from that pool, and it's possible that there could be one for every level after Squatty. The common range, though, will be three to five. All right, that covers everything I was able to uncover. If you saw something I missed or have a different take, then by all means, let us know in the comments. If you found this video interesting, then please give it a like to help other people find it. Especially for a small channel like mine, it really helps. 
And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, you might want to do that as I will continue to cover War of the Chosen through its release on August 29th and beyond. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. I hope we see you next time.